Liana De Bruyne joins us. Played over 100 games for our country between 2002 and 2016, including World Cups, Kingstown, Auckland, Singapore, Sydney, Commonwealth Games, three of those. Thank you so much for your time, Liana. Welcome to the show. No worries. Thank you for having me. Well, as Dame Nolene, little prickly there, uh, says, no, 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 we didn't crack under the pressure. How did you see, you explained to me and our listeners the last three, four, five minutes of that match this morning? Yeah, look, it, it was definitely intense, and obviously you had an eighth player on the court with that crowd. I think some of those players have never really felt that pressure as such, and I do think, you know, mistakes happen when, when times get tough and you're running after the clock, and, you know, every ball is crucial. So, um, yeah, to, to me it was just lack of experience in, in, in those pressure situations. Yeah, I mean, and now in a position where, I mean, everyone's got the calculators out, everyone's juggling, everyone's going, okay, well, if this happens, this happens, this happens. How do you see it? Being a player that has got so much experience, Leanna, what what are the players saying to each other now? Do they just look to the next game and go, we've got to beat Jamaica tonight? Yeah, definitely. There's no point dwelling on that one. It's happened and it's all over. But I also believe that they would have taken a lot from that and everybody would look in the mirror and go, what do I need to do to bring my best game in against Jamaica, which is not going to be easy. They've got some world-class players in there, especially their defensive end is on fire. So um, you've got to bring your A game and your role that you've got to play. Knowles is really, really good at um, pinpointing what your role is as a player in the team. And what she's going to ask from you is you're going to have to do that 110% um, tonight. How good are Jamaica at the moment? I'm going back to the Commonwealth Games last year where they just seemed unplayable and then they beat Australia, obviously, and and didn't save their A game for the final. But how good are they right now? (laughs) Very good. I think the experience that, especially Janelle Fowler, you've got Romelda Aitken, they've had massive games over in Australia. Their defensive end has just won the SSN competition over there, their tails will definitely be up, and especially after um, this morning's game or the last night, you know, they'll look at that and, and go, if we if we can stick together, if we don't get angry at each other, because that's unfortunately sometimes the downfall of those Jamaican teams is once things get a little bit tough, they can drop their heads, but I think they would go into that game with a lot of confidence. Is this result for the Silver Ferns 1995 all over again? <laughs> oh, look, oh, yeah, yes and no. You've got different caliber of, of players, and I think everybody's just got so much better. You know, there's in every team just about in that tournament, some players are playing overseas and playing international players week in week out they're getting more professional I think in in terms of that everybody's more on a a level um, you know on a par when it comes to these games and and nobody is so afraid to play each other anymore I remember you know freaking out to play against Australia but when we started ANZ Tams you play them week in week out and it, it just got easier Australia, you know, are they always the yardstick and will always be the yardstick? In that case, how good are they right now as well? Yeah, um, I mean, we all love beating the Aussies. Yes, they, um, they're at just everything. One of those things. <laughs> yeah, at everything. Um, but I think they're just clinical. I think the only thing I would suggest that could um, could be a downfall for them is they play that long shot and super shot and they also have breaks during the quarter. So now what they've asked for in these games is they've got to sort out their own problems, whereas in their local competition they can actually call time and then ask for help or ask, you know, get just get gathered together again and sort things out. They're not going to have this in these crucial times and they're going to have to sort it out themselves. So, But, you know, they bring their A game if, if the big games um, come up and we all know that they're very physical and that's the thing that people don't like playing against them is they're just so, so physical. Well, that's they hate losing, Liana. That's what I love about them. They, and look at them. In turn, doesn't matter cricket, rugby, whatever. They just despise losing, and they'll do whatever it takes to win. And and a lot of us, you know, find that a bit distasteful at times. But that's what sport is, isn't it? Absolutely. I think um, you know one of the things I, I do think us Kiwis are just like, oh yeah, she'll be all right. Attitude sometimes. Yeah. Which, um, yeah. You know, the Aussies don't have that. Their competition is is massive. These 
a lot of people that want those bibs. There's a lot of competition. So at the young age, they have to work really, really hard to get to the top. And they're not going to let that hard work slip away. That's why they're so competitive. Liana De Bruyne is with us over 100 caps for our country. I mean, I'm asking you a million questions here. I hope you don't mind. How good are the Poms? Can they upset <laughs> Australia? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I, I think the the Poms are very emotional players. They, you know, they can either be really, really good or not so good. Um, obviously, they would want to come back stronger than some Com games. That was a very disappointing um, kind of game for for them. So, I'd say they would take the lessons from that. But I also think that they get too emotional in in the tough games which Australia will have the the upper hand on that for them. Okay, reassure us here, Liana. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I, mean, I, yeah, I just, wor- I'm a, a worry wart. I'm a, I, I am, I'm a worry wart from heck, you know, and, and, um, and I've got so much time for, for this team. I mean, I you know, infamously mm. said that they were a bunch of old fossils and that they wouldn't win last time, and they, uh, as soon as they won, they got that tweet and they plastered over everything, and I had to eat the humble pie. Look, I think Dame no- Nolan is an amazing coach and everything else. Mm. I just, I'm worried that this is a hiccup, a foot trip, and we're not going to be able to recover from it. I think we will. I definitely think we are going to come out of this better. You had senior players that were sitting on the bench in crucial moments that I didn't quite agree with, Nolene. You need that experience towards the end um, for, for, for those crucial moments. Those girls will step up another level. They know as leaders they have to play better. The expectation on them is going to be better. And they will pull it off because this is, you know, this might be the last time they get to do that. So I definitely think they're going to move on. They're going to move on fast and focus on the next job. One second. I just got the... Ian, I'm just on the air. Sorry, mate. Can I call you back? Is that is that possible? <laughs> you can be cool when you've got three minutes. Okay, thanks, buddy. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> sorry, that was the All Black coach. I just, sorry, Liana. When, oh, yeah. when the All Black... <laughs> Discussion. Sorry, I'm sorry about. I'm sorry, it's not just any old Ian. When the All Black coach calls, calls your phone, I'm just sorry. I've never done that before. I'm embarrassed. But I'm embarrassed by doing that. Can I just finish by saying I don't know whether you watched it last night, but I stayed up and watched. Well, I didn't stay up. God, I mean, what am I saying? But I was watching South Africa <laughs> um, beat Italy uh, in the Women's World Cup, and what a thrilling game! Did you watch? I didn't because I needed all the sleep I could get to be at the Sky Studio this morning. Um, but no, absolutely, obviously thrilled for the girls to, to go through to the next round and history has been made. So definitely, uh, you know, deep down in my heart, I'm obviously still quite supportive of South African sport, which is awesome to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. And, you know, to go through the next round, it's brilliant. Have you, have you watched much of the World Cup or not? I have actually. I um, I must admit, sometimes I think, oh, 90 minutes were not a lot, but <laughs> yeah, you kind of you kind of do get a little bit involved, and in, especially it's on our doorstep, and probably the more understanding about the game was was what intrigued me a little bit as well. So yeah, it's been absolutely buzz everywhere you go. You're going to be in the studio for the rat for the rest of the Snapball World Cup. I'm hoping. <laughs> no, unfortunately oh, not. But, uh, other girls, yeah, I know. But anyway, that's life, and and I'll be supporting from the sidelines. Okay. Well, look, appreciate you very much, and hopefully we'll get in touch with you next week and uh, have a little bit of a review of a review of the tournament. Thank you so much. And a, and a happy a happy phone call. <laughs> <laughs> look, I don't think I don't think he's calling me to say Sean Stevenson's pulled up lame, and you're on the right wing, Martin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah. That would be awesome. Wouldn't it just say hey, what a great phone call to get? Thank you, Liana. Okay, bye bye yeah. now. All right, see ya. Yeah, the the only time I've ever had a phone call from the All Black coach, and I know it's not about selections.